So we got Baldur's Gate 3. Ten things you need to do first. Go to video. Baldur's Gate 3 throws a lot at you in the first couple okay. hours. So much so that isn't this a game to where uh, items, I seen like a, a ding dong in the opening area? Here are ten things like the you first, need to do when you boot um, it up for the first time. Oh my God! This is he in his head? Some very light spoilers for Act One, so you've been warned. Hey, spoilers! You Baldur's yes, Gate you have been warned, bro. All about your party, and unless you happen to be playing four-player co-op with friends, you're gonna need to find some key members. Thankfully, okay. the majority of the game's companions are not only available in the first act, but close to where you start on the beach. You'll likely okay. find everyone with some thorough searching. However, so is everybody like demons and stuff like that, in right? In case you have trouble finding any of them, the half-elf cleric Shadowheart is the easiest to find. If you saved her from the pod on the Nautiloid, she'll be passed out on the beach a few meters in front of where you landed. If if you left okay. her for dead or ignored her altogether, follow the beach north and you'll instead find Shadowheart attempting to open a locked door. Mm. Asterion the Elf Rogue is located close by, pass through the wreckage of the Nautiloid west of the starting beach and okay, follow so the road. Like you'll find him and calling stuff like out that. for help near a crashed pod. And to think, I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> north with my what? The crash ship is the roadside cliffs. You better decorate the ground with my what? Ancient sigil circle. Interact with it and save the trapped person inside, and you'll meet Gale, a human wizard. Follow the road north of Gale's location to find a pair of tieflings arguing about their captured prisoner, the Gith Yankee fighter Lysel, who you met on the Nautiloid. Deal with the tieflings. Everybody looks so unique and, and weird. <laughs> you likely encounter Will the Ooh. human while defending a group of adventurers from goblins at who the gates that? of the Druid settlement in the Emerald Grove. After the fight, enter and Ooh. chat with Will to recruit him. Alternatively, if you meet and recruit Karlak, the tiefling barbarian first, Will shows up at your camp to kill her and you can recruit him here instead. Carlac oh, herself really? is located west of Emerald Grove next to the river. So I can just, just get rid of people of and like replace them? She can with be people easy that... to miss oh, if you're not nice. paying attention. Be I like warned that. though, if you kill or aggro the druids or tieflings in Emerald Grove, Carlac won't join your party. And that covers what? just about all of the origin companion characters. There are additional party members you can acquire later on in but the yeah, game. Yeah, like I saw, like I was saying before, I was here. seeing all types of penises this and stuff like that. This one is a bit tricky, you know, but before. it's certainly worth the effort. Before you escape the Nautiloid, you will come across a devil and a mind flare duking it out. You're encouraged huh. to run past these guys and connect the transponder, but with some strategy and a bit of luck, you can kill Commander Zake and loot his sword. It's called the Everburn Sword, hmm. and it deals 6 to 19 damage with extra fire damage. The key is to keep the Mind Flare alive, debuff Commander Zake, and save Shadowheart spells to deal big damage. So wait, we can all just as jump as the devil? As long as one party member escapes, your character will be resurrected with full health for the next section. Hmm, Speaking okay. of party members, Shadowheart is arguably the most important. From a narrative standpoint, her little box seems to be crucial to the story. From a gameplay standpoint, a little, clerics uh, Rubik's are Cube. overpowered. They get access to a wide variety of spells, including Bless and Bane. Bless okay. adds a 1d4 to attack rolls and saving rolls for 10 turns to 3 targets, and Bane gives a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving rolls I don't know what none of this means, but three sounds interesting. It's good to have one of these spells handy for some tough combat situations. Beyond that shadow heart has I'll be real y'all I don't thrive in games like this I'm terrible in She's games like this one of the game's romance options if you're into that sort of thing there's still plenty of wine and the whole night is ahead of us I'm a freak. Let me stop. Yo, let me stop. Hey, yo, stop, stop, stop. You're provided stop. knowledge on certain stop, subjects yo. or personality traits can be used in dialogue, decision making, and dice rolls. And the game dice rolls you to play your part with bonus benefits. Can we gamble? You do something that fits the background of your character, you earn inspiration. You can then okay. use inspiration to re-roll a failed dice check, which is a very valuable thing to have. You can hold up to four inspirations at a time, so it's important not to hoard them so you can keep getting more. That said, any okay. additional inspiration gained afterward are turned into bonus XP, so no matter what, you'll benefit. Think carefully about the role you pick for your character and Can I play like some evil just menace? The game. Of course, these are simply bonuses and there's no negative penalty for playing outside your role. Okay. As you accumulate party members, it's important to return to your camp often. Here, you can take a long rest, which will fully heal your party and restore all spell slots if you mm, have the resources. It's like a little this GTA, like laying in bed type thing. Members. If you see an exclamation point over a teammate's head, that means they want to have an important context-sensitive conversation with you. These can be missed, so make sure to chat up everyone when you get the chance. I ain't talking to her. Story moments can also trigger by returning to camp. For example, Will will sneak into your camp if you've recruited Carlac before him and confront her. 
You know that mysterious ancient door near the beach where you started? You'll uh -uh. want to get in here. If you've met Asterion, he's the perfect candidate to pick the lock. If he fails or if you kill him, you can leap up to the top and fall through the hole in the roof. You'll end up in a room surrounded by traps. Hit the button on the pillar to disarm uh -oh. them. And Booby traps! set of double doors. Loot all the weapons off the dead skeletons. You'll thank me later and head to the back of the room. You should Wait, so this game, this game's a, um, a multiplayer game, stairs. right? Once you hit that button, a door will open and a fight will ensue. The skeletons will attack you, but they can't use melee weapons. Oh, the weapons Minecraft skeletons. You Once you've cleared out the area, open the sarcophagus and have a chat with the friendly skeleton man. Eventually, he'll make his way back to your camp and can respect you for a price. Make sure to check the chest. Really? How much money? How much money we get? Skeleton man, because there's an amulet of lost voices which lets you speak with the dead. The corpse regards you lifelessly. There are other ways to enter the ruin, so don't stress out if you fail the lockpick check and lack the athletics to jump up on the roof. Just make sure you don't forget to plunder this crypt before you get too far. That man is dead. One of the dead fun things to do in Baldur's Gate is the ability to converse with animals. Not only does it result in lots of funny conversations, but can lead to alternative solutions to quests and unique situations like getting a dog that hangs out in your camp. Okay, that sounds pretty cool, dog. I'd rather talk to a dog than a cow. Acquired through certain <clears throat> classes. If you want the spell Ooh, right who is that? Start, Whoa, go back to the girl. Bard, and Ranger, who all get Ooh, it as a how you doing? Spell. Excuse Warlocks me, miss. I see you from across the room. Who is this? Slot. You unlock this at level two That's as kind of cool. Nine he kind of bit like Darth Vader. You can also acquire speak with animals from the barbarian oh, no, the angry Shrek and the paladin subclass of the, the ancients. However, with these, you have cool. to wait until level three to unlock it. Another option is to pick the forest gnome as your race. They get speak with animals as their exclusive racial trait. Finally, while more limited, human you can okay. always use a potion of animal speaking. There's one you can find early on in the owl bear nest. Listen, I'm not speaking to that thing, bro. I'm definitely shooting that. Oil dog companion who hangs out at your camp and lets you give it. Oh, look at that dog. So here's how to do that. Climb up the north cliff of the owl bear cave in the forest. You'll find a white dog named Scratch hanging around the dead owner Gomwe. Scratch. I call all the dogs a uh, Ralph. To speak with animal spell and talk to the pup directly. Ask him to travel with you, and when he refuses, tell him to follow your scent back to camp. You can even get him to return to camp without using the speak to animal spell, but it's a little tougher. Whatever you do, though, don't try to convince the grieving pup that his owner is dead. You'll make him angry nah. and he will fight you. Later, and I'll, and I'll, can I'll kill him. And, hang out there permanently. and I'll kill him. You can even summon him in combat a little later down the line. <laughs> you can dig up treasure, but you'll need a shovel to do that. You can find plenty of shovels throughout your adventure, but the easiest one you can Bro, find... Bro, she right dug that treasure up so As quick, it's crazy. You might trigger a random perception check. If you clear it, you'll be able to see an area you can dig. Having a shovel on hand is nice, but it's also important to have a torch handy. The thing is, not every class or race needs a torch. Some races have dark vision, which allows them to see. Well, what the type dark, of spider is that? Some races have spells that also act as light sources. Additionally, if you purchase Baldur's Gate 3 during early access or bought the deluxe edition, be sure to check I your did traveler's it. chest in the camp. There are some useful items that you might recognize from Larian's previous games. Chances are the first town you come across in Baldur's Gate 3 is Emerald Grove. The name may make yeah. it sound peaceful, but tensions are high. The druids uh -oh. want the tieflings out of their Look grove, at those the demons! The resources aren't equipped to venture out into the world. Whether you like it or not, you've walked into a massive powder keg and you can unknowingly become the match. If you pick what? up the druid idol, the druids will aggro and attack you and every tiefling. If you cross into the Emerald Grove before they invite you, the druids will also aggro. There are quite a few important okay. quests in this location, as well as the first key vendor, so tread carefully. One wrong move and the town could go up in flames. Oh my god, you heathen! That if you destroy the town, you can still find other ways Diabolical to Diabolical demon, quests. look at you! Hopefully these tips will jumpstart your adventure in Baldur's That's Gate it? 3. If you have any other tips for your fellow... Listen. All right, listen. Chat, listen. All right, I'm just start calling you guys chat. I don't know why, but I just feel like I'm just talking to, like, a chat, even though, like, I'm not. But, like, I'll just call you guys chat. I like calling, like... I don't know why. It's just, like, I like calling y'all chat, right? So that's you guys' new name for me. My... Listen. My supporter's name is called chat. Just chat. And when I actually started, like, Twitch shit, like, tw uh, Twitch streaming... <laughs> When I start Twitch streaming, I'm gonna call you guys chat. Is that nice? That's that's cool, right? I'm gonna call you guys chat. So listen, I'll be real. I knew nothing about this game. I I'll keep it real, right? I didn't even notice the hype about this game. Now when I looked up uh Baldur's Gate 3, I saw some things like two years ago, one year ago. So I'm thinking, oh snap, so this game has been like people have been, you know, keeping up with this game. So 
I'll be real. I didn't notice anything about this game until uh, I saw a Twitch clip from uh, wh wh who was it? Was it Soda Poppin? I think. I think it was from Soda Poppin. Of like whenever like you're creating your character and then like bro, they have like you can actually like you can actually you know see, bro. They're on like some cyberpunk type stuff, bro. You can see the the genitals and all that, bro. For real, bro. Like go look it up. I think the clip is still up on Twitch, whatever. For uh, Soto popping, but that, that's how I noticed uh, this game, right? And um, yeah, other than that, you know, again, I didn't notice any of the hype and stuff like that. But when I did look it up, people were following this game for years. So um, I'm not here to, you know, try to say, oh, well, this game just came out of nowhere. Blah, blah, blah. No, people, this game has been followed. This game has been kept up with. So um, I guess we'll see uh, how it does. Um, other than that, I've seen a lot of, you know, Twitch streamers play it, which is pretty cool, but uh, I'll keep it real. It's not really my type of game, um, if, if I'm being honest. Some of the cutscenes did look pretty cool, so I tried to, like, you know, see if there were, like, any special cutscenes and stuff like that. Um, I think I found some, but, again, it's not really my type of game, so... Um, you know, I don't like to skip games, but, you know, this is why I'm, you know, I'm creating a video for Baldur's, uh, Baldur, Baldur Gate 3, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but yeah, this is not really my type of game, uh, respectfully, you know, if this is a game that you like, then I want you to, uh, you, you not to play it because I, you know, I said not to play it. Um, uh, well, I'm not saying not to play it. I'm just saying like, I don't play it. I don't want you to not play it just because I don't play it. That's yeah. I don't want you to do that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it looks pretty cool. The, the cutscenes look pretty cool. It's just the overall, I don't know. I just don't get anything. This game doesn't really like bring me in or like suck me in you know respectfully to any developers that put in you know any time in this game respect to you um it's just you know like i said it's not really my type of game that's just really it but comment down below what do you guys think of baldur's gate 3 uh we'll just give you guys a pan on this and um yeah i'll see you guys later for the next time i'm out and 